All right, it's Sunday here at Hempfest Radical Russ. I've made my way to the normal booth. It feels like home. And the Normal Women's Alliance has really gotten a, quite a presence here. And joining us here from the Normal Women's Alliance is Joy. Hi, Joy. Hello there, Russ. It's really nice to meet you today. And you did such a great job with 420 Radio on the panel today. Thank you. And I love the shirt. Stoner professional or professional stoner? Can you tell? And speak your truth in the workplace. That's very good because this is something, you know, I, I always made a point about medical marijuana laws that it kind of poked a hole in drug testing at work because if you work with a patient and they work just fine, why are you testing me? Because I'm healthy. It's interesting. And we had here the, the uh, president of the UFCW. He wrote the first and only collective bargaining agreement. He was the speaker here yesterday that actually allows for medical marijuana in a union contract. So that's thrilling. That area of employment law is really interesting and growing and being developed. And it's certainly being developed in Colorado and, and Washington. And people are, are sort of making practices out of it. Um, specialties so that's an interesting spot um, but I am I am the normal women's alliances industrial hemp expert yes. so I wanted to just share with you some really exciting stuff that's going on on the federal level right now with industrial hemp what's amazing is that on July 11th of this year 2013 for the first time in 50 years our US House of Representatives not only voted on a hemp bill they passed it and that it's historical and amazing what they passed was an amendment to the Farm Bill, which in all, uh, for, in the interest of full disclosure, we sort of hope the Farm Bill doesn't pass. It doesn't stand for farm. It's a bloated uh, Republican agricultural bill that stands for the Federal Agricultural Reform and Risk Management Act of 2013. But what the House did was, hey, if this horrible bill does end up passing the Farm Bill, then now it's going to pass with the amendment that they just voted on, and that is that for states that already have industrial hemp legal, colleges and universities in those states will in fact be able to grow industrial hemp for research purposes. But beyond that, we have two very exciting things happening on a federal level, and that would be H.R. 525 and Senate Bill SB 359. They mirror each other, and the uh, short title of both of those bills is the Industrial Hemp Farming Act of 2013. And in short, what that bill seeks to do, or those bills seek to do, is remove the words industrial hemp from the definition of the word marijuana within the Controlled Substances Act. So the minute the words industrial hemp are removed from the definition of marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act, no longer a controlled substance. Obviously, it has no business being there. Um, the DEA is the only one that can issue permits to grow industrial hemp, but there's a catch there. They don't issue the permits. So uh, the fact that that's happening is huge. And our own Washington um, representative, Jim McDermott, from my own legislative district, is one of the 17 co-sponsors out of all of those hundreds of representatives. He's one of the 17 co-sponsors of uh, HR 525. So we're very proud of Jim McDermott. We also have three industrial hemp bills going forth right now in the state of Washington. So there is just huge movement going on. Um, so folks, we're moving forward on every front of cannabis sativa L both cultivars, marijuana and industrial hemp. Awesome. Yes, yes. And I, I know that the, recently uh, there's been a couple of states that have uh, amended their state hemp law because previous hemp laws were, well, as soon as the DEA gives you a permit, go right ahead. Yeah. And I think it was, was it Maine that changed theirs or maybe it was Vermont. I'm not sure. I, it, it was probably Vermont. Right. And so this, uh, this bill that's going through will affect both the states, right? The ones that say you have to have a permit and of course the ones that say you don't have to have a permit. Yes, well, you know, and we get back to that same old, same old, the feds rule the land. So whatever the states are doing, I certainly believe in the states, rights, But the feds certainly aren't making any distinction right now. Um, they don't really care what laws the states pass. They're going to control industrial hemp unless these two bills can pass. Um, and they are the only ones who can issue the permits and they simply refuse to issue them. Yeah. Uh, it, the only legal industrial hemp grow that we've had in this country since the last legal grow in 1958, post-war efforts, Hemp for Victory, was between 1999 and 2003, and that was the Hawaii Industrial Hemp Research Project. And that was amazing, and Dr. David West, who is, I think, the world's foremost botanical resource um, uh, and botanical expert with regards to industrial hemp and even marijuana, um, he was the head research scientist for that grow. But that's in 2003 that ended. So. Um, but the, the bottom line is, we feel so hopeful and we, we feel very inspired by what's going on on a federal level right now um, with Polis and Blumenauer, who are really our two main My champions. Your representative.
representative. Um, just very proud of them, very inspired by them, and, and hopping on their bandwagon, and things really are moving forward on a huge level. And, and I know you have another uh, cause this year. Do you I see the button there? The uh, Lily button. Indeed. Let's talk a little bit about Lily. Indeed, let's do that. So, uh, Billy Fisher. Uh, never really had custody of Lily because he was working uh, in Idaho uh, it, and Lily was from Spokane and um, I guess the long story short is that the most important part to know about this story, the part that matters, is that uh, Lily's mother is has some emotional instability um, and she's missing right now actually. Nobody knows where she is including the courts and they're in the middle of a massive court session, <coughs> court procedure. But he has this degenerative disc disease, and he treats his degenerative disc disease with medical marijuana. And the state of Washington has decided that the foster system would be a more appropriate place for his daughter, Lily, because he treats his degenerative disc disease with medical marijuana. He's a responsible, hardworking, intelligent young man. I've never seen such a loving, caring father. <clears throat> and uh, Lily is most definitely not in better uh, hands being in the foster system. Child Protective Services has absolutely stomped all over his rights. Um, it's putting him through a, a, just an, a, a litany of legal hell and, and hoops that uh, there's absolutely no need for him to jump from. He could actually be a role model for many other dads. So we are very much hoping for some court justice. Uh, of course, uh, he's socioeconomically deprived, so he's depending on public defenders. And one after another, they continue to just fail um, and be overburdened in their workload. And I know public defenders uh, and, and public prosecutors work very difficult and long hours, but um, he's not getting the legal help that he needs. So he and Sarah Frank, who is Moms for Marijuana, um, for this state, that's also his girlfriend, Sarah Frank, they are turning into their own paralegals and they do legal research and they get information from, you know, through blood, sweat and tears and hard work and they fight for their rights on a grassroots level and they're doing an amazing job bringing awareness to Child Protective Services and just the, and just, and really, truly, uh, I don't want to say evil, I hate to use those kinds of words, but what I can say is uh, it's an unlawful organization, CPS stomping on legal rights and patients rights. Yeah, we're going to focus on that a whole lot more. I've got an assignment for Alternate to write about this. Yes! So I'd like to talk to you and some of these other activists about it because it's, uh, it's new to me. I've got one of those. Okay. I've got one of those buttons already. It's a new subject to me, but the more I learn about it, the more it's even more insidious than the whole private prison system for profit. Worse. Which I always thought was bad, but at least in the, in the private prison, prison system for profit, you went through a court and a regular law applied to you. The CPS stuff, they're making up the rules as they go. And, and family court is a very, you know, God bless everybody who has to deal with the family court system and, and is responsible for it but it's a system you don't ever want to get have to put your finger in because once you're in it it's not the, it's not like civil law and civil court family law and family court is totally different from criminal law totally different from civil law it, it's it's a system you never want to get involved in because once any one of us are under a microscope any one of us are under a microscope you can find anything to to um, to basically uh, attack someone's parenting. Yeah. So, and that's what happens when you're involved in family court, you're under that microscope and there's... Joy, it's amazing stuff. And we'll have you on again uh, future shows, I can tell. Beautiful. Because we need a hemp expert and also somebody who's so you know, passionate about this movement and we appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you, Russ. Thank you for all the work you're doing, Russ. All right. And one last thing. Go ahead and say your name and I'm, you're listening to 420radio.org. This is Joy Beckerman Maher and you're listening to 420 Radio. Thank you. Thank you.